somebody says the polls can change based on what happens in terms of events that the candidates can't control but I think the key thing to realize they're just polls okay the other thing to realize is that the first primary for the Republicans uh, takes place in Iowa and they have a completely different system and so what you could do is pretty much look at the various candidates Republican candidates how much time have they spent in Iowa how much time have they spent organizing in, in Iowa in terms of, you know, do they have like boots on the ground, you know, people going door to door to get that position of those candidates out? And what you'll find is that some people have not spent that enough time in, in Iowa. Key point is Trump. If he, if you take away his TV show about your father, to me, Trump was a guy who never had any money. If you went to the bank for a loan, they wouldn't give it to you. Trump, they got to give it because he owes so much. If the bank said, Trump, we want our money now, the whole banks would collapse. But he can get loan. But the guy was never a good businessman. He was always running out of money. Or what was Trump doing? Trump would, you have a nice penthouse apartment in New York. Trump want to put a building in front of you. You know, and, that, and you know, and that's what you could say right now. You know, Trump is a glitch. You know, <laughs> that what happens is that it opens a door. And if you see another glitch coming, look at, um, I think it was on Saturday Night Live, where, where what happens is that you get this joke. Uh, all of a sudden, the Kanye West wants to run for president, okay? Or you look at uh, Will Smith wants to run for president. And that's the danger. You have such serious issues in the world today, and you're going to put a comedian or somebody who has a talk show in the Oval Office and have no sense of any sense of history, politics, or just how to govern. So when you look up um, a person who is like this pole front runner, if, if, if he or she has not done the, the work, Iowa will, will, will give you a surprise. And if you see, for example, uh, going back a number of years ago, I, Iowa was a good surprise in terms of Obama. You know, and that's, that's, the state takes pride in that. You could have somebody who is last in the polls in Iowa, and all of a sudden they, they play second, they don't, you know, or third. What does it say about the American people? Though? What it says about the American people is that American people are pretty much, and you can see, you want to see the American people, all you have to do is get on a bus or, 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 or train. The Amer American, American people now are on their, little, on, on their little gadgets, and this is what they're doing. Do, 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 okay? If you went back to 1965 or 66, right, and, and somebody said, oh, but everyone's going to have a little gadget like this, you would say, oh, man, I, I, when 1984 gets here, man, you know, I mean, it's going to be Big Brother watching us all year. But, you know, we're going to be doing. You know. If you look at all the science fiction movies that were coming out in the 60s, you know, those movies that came after Rodan and Godzilla and all that stuff, what happened? There were always these societies in which people seemed to be controlled, okay, manipulated by some being or government. That's where you are right now. The average person is doing this all the time. Can you imagine if. Let's say, for example, and some people think about this, if Obama was really, really, really a really bad guy, like Stalin or somebody like that, or Mussolini, you know, these little gadgets, man, you could pump something through here, and we would all be following this. Saying, wow, you know, I, you know, I think all the Muslims should be round up. Look how many hits I got for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So all of a sudden, it gets down to that, and that's driving um, um, politics. See, I learned this nonsense because I'm a baseball guy, right? And what happened? Baseball is now governed by numbers, okay? How fast you ran, how fast the ball was hit. Look, it's a basic game played on a field. You hit, you run, you score, okay? How fast you did it, do you really need that information? No. But what happens now, we're all into numbers, and so what happens? You want to be president? All I have to do time is put you out here, a funny picture of you doing something silly, okay? And then all of a sudden you get hit. The last thing I put on here, I don't know if you saw I put my little Obama hat on, made my ear look like an Obama elf. A lot of hits. I look like a silly little elf, right? And, and so all of a sudden what happened, that gets out to him. Now, maybe I can say, the little elf guy, maybe I can be a running mate for Hillary Clinton. I put my little elf head out there, somebody thinks it's funny, I get a million hits, and all of a sudden now, Hillary has to say, well, you know, I like Ethelbert, but I don't think he's a really good running mate for me. Isn't that stupid? 
I stood here, made a funny little picture, and I'm out there, and all of a sudden I'm part of the discussion of American foreign policy at a time like this. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago, I was up in Norway, and it was the first time I sat next to somebody who was from Greenland. And I had these one aha moment, and I said as a joke, I said, can I ask you a question? I said, Are you, what about global warming? She said, you know, every time I go outside my house, I see it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was real for her. It was nothing, you know, I mean, it's like, for example, you know, how um, old Washingtonians deal with gentrification. Oh, look at all the white people. You know, I'm a, I'm a polar bear. Hey, no snow. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, it's the same sort of dynamics there where all of a sudden you look up and, and what you took for granted, you know, the snow or this or that, is totally gone. And, and, and all of a sudden now you're a polar bear mating with a grizzly, you know, <laughs> you know, in an interracial relationship. <laughs> and, you know, and what's going to happen because of the movement, not just of animals, but of people, you get interesting combinations, you know, like I was talking to a guy who was like Palestinian, he was married to somebody from like Guatemala, you know, you can get all these different, you know, sort of relationships because people are on the move. Uh, and, and, and it's going to mean, you know, like you look up, um, many people speak like maybe three languages, you know, and so this is, this is the future. But yeah, man, the global warming thing, is, it's really, really frightening. I mean, when I was up in Norway, um, I could see, you know, the glaciers melting, you know, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not abstract, you know, uh, and that's why you see these articles about what's going to happen to a place like Miami. The, the the important part of Pope Francis's message, you know, uh, you know, dealing with the whole thing that we have to have responsibility in terms of for the earth, you know. Um, I remember for me, um, the poet Ernesto Cardinal from Nicaragua, he had a poem entitled e Ecology, and talked about how, in that sense, the the revolution, the Sandinista revolution, wasn't about the people; it was about the mountains and the trees and everything, because they too had been oppressed. You know, and that's what we're seeing now. And, and we have re we have a responsibility to speak up for those people or things that cannot speak. And so we have to speak up for the trees. We have to speak up for the fish. You know, and we've seen that. You know, uh, a lot of people because of where they live don't see it. You see, they don't see it. You know, or for example, are just concerned about their space. You also see how many people died very young. And the other thing that you also see is especially to the black men, you see the AIDS epidemic, which just wiped out. When you look at five, six, seven people here in DC and you say, wow, here were guys who never reached it, like even their thirties. And so you could say, okay, what could they have achieved in terms of artistically, you know, what could they have created? What book they may have written, you know, a movie they may have made. But you know, you don't realize the loss. I remember someone said, we won't realize this until maybe a 50, 100 years later, like in a continent like Africa, you know, a place that was just devastated, you know, the best and the brightest, you know, just wiped out. Like a place like Rwanda. It's going it's, to take a long time to, to cover. Or what happens now when you look at Libya, Sudan, parts of Nigeria, a whole generation of young kids are not going to school. It's just a whole generation of kids around the world who are getting no education at all. <laughs> Thank you.